Hi, my name is Lori Klein. Did you know that hand coloring photographs has been popular since the 1800s? Color photography hadn't been invented yet, so painters added color to the black and white photographs. Hand coloring has a long and vibrant history. We all can be part of that history. In 1999, my first book was published. The reason I got into hand coloring photographs was that a college student of mine asked me to teach her how to hand color her photographs. I never had hand colored before. And maybe you can relate to this, but I was totally intimidated by using a paintbrush or drawing with pencils. Soon after that, Prismacolor approached me about doing a project with them on hand coloring. I had to listen to what was being presented to me. So I taught myself how to hand color photographs and hand coloring changed my life, my career, and I hope it has as big of an impact on you too. I have had the distinctive pleasure of teaching hand coloring to all ages, from young children to grown adults, medical students integrating expressive arts, and retirees looking for a new way to express themselves. So together, let's turn our photographs into coloring books, creating unique, one-of-kind pieces of art. So let's talk about the basics. Choosing your images for hand coloring. When choosing files or negatives to hand color, you want a lot of highlights. Even though I hand colored the tree bark, the midtones and the dark areas don't come through that much when they're hand colored. Infrared and black and white. I am an infrared shooter. Infrared is a wonderful medium for hand coloring because so much of the image captures are the highlights. I do hand color black and white images too. The images that I'm going to show you are both infrared and black and white, and they're from negatives and from digital files. In these before and after prints of the tulips, you can see the depth that hand coloring creates when you hand color part of the image and leave the rest untouched. I recommend you make more than one image per file so that you can experiment and try different colors and approaches with your hand coloring. Also, when we only have one image, we sometimes think it's precious and don't take risks to get out of our comfort zone. The top image is a black and white print and the bottom image was sepia toned. I used different colors to hand color each image, which yielded very different results. The photo print surface is really important. You need to have a matte surface paper when your images are printed, especially if you're going to be using pencils to hand color with. I don't recommend inkjet papers with this technique. I use digital silver imaging for printing my hand colored images. Their photographic paper, digital silver print, fiber matte, and their processes will print from negatives and digital files and has the perfect surface for hand coloring. Also, the images can be sepia tone or selenium toned and they are archival. If you're using other papers, and or inkjet prints with pencils, you will need to spray your prints to create a matte surface that will accept the pencil. There are pros and cons with that. Oftentimes when you're working with a spray, the matte finish it created on the print can come off, leaving areas that won't take the coloring. I created this kit with Prismacolor. Pencils are what I work with the most. I do use oils at times, and sometimes I use both oils and pencils in coloring an image. Supplies. Some of the supplies you probably have at home, but what you're going to need are colored pencils. They can be waxed or oil-based, a pencil sharpener, oil paints and brushes, turpentine, I would get the odorless turpentine. You can also use turpenoid, vegetable oil, which is probably in your pantry, Q-tips, cotton balls, toothpicks, and baby food jars. Freestyle is a great resource for hand coloring. They do carry the Arista oils and colored pencils, and they're just a fun website to peruse. Very rarely do I completely hand color an image. I did feel in this case it worked. This image is hand colored solely with pencils. I was a wedding and portrait photographer for many years. I was known for my hand colored images of my subjects. The images became one of kind wall art would be passed down through the generations. They became a family's legacy. Also, the hand coloring adds a timeless quality to the image. This image was taken 25 years ago. This little girl just turned 21. Again, the timeless features of hand coloring. You can see in the grass how I created a wash with the pencils using a mixture of oil and turpentine. Your work area is really important. You need a smooth surface to hand color on, 
lighting is really important, I would either use sunlight or a mixture of tungsten and fluorescent lighting. Ventilation is essential because the terpenoid or the turpentine can leave a heavy odor. I hope you will join me for my workshop on introduction to hand coloring in the digital era up in the Providence, Rhode Island area. It will be April 27th through the 28th, 9.30 till 4. We will be using the digital silver matte fiber print from DSI where you will send in your images and they will produce beautiful photographs for you to hand color. Also stay tuned for my hand coloring tutorials. They will be released later this month. I will be doing demonstrations and go into greater details of hand coloring your images. Have fun. You can't make a mistake. You can erase your mistakes. So when you start hand coloring, and if you decide to start on your own, just have a really good time. It's a play date. I hope you've enjoyed this demo, and I look forward to seeing you at one of my upcoming workshops.